After arrest and before trial comes jail. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I've been stationed at the jail for the past year and a half as a deputy. I wanted a job that was exciting, that was something new every single day, that it wasn't uh, the same thing over and over and over again. It's a job that's got interesting people and I also enjoy helping the public. I'm on my way. Responding to an inmate, an inmate fight. Hey, don't move, man. What I say, don't move. I'm sorry. <coughs> I didn't know. Alright, man, let's roll towards me. Roll towards me. Put your knees up to your chest, man. Sit up on the chest. Bring your knees up to your chest. Right now, this is uh, just the uh, the after effects of the uh, taser cartridge. This is the wire, the prong is inside the uh, cartridge right now. Collecting all this to, uh, to book into evidence. There was a code blue in J1, we sent the response team. There was, between the two gentlemen, code blue is when there's a fight between two inmates. We really don't know what happened yet, I don't have all the details, except for it was over a phone. The gentleman will be going to segregation. It was your phone stuff that got us started. Were you guys, was it anything between you guys before? No, nope. just that it's two phones in the whole pod. The yeah. dude want to be on the phone. He, he want to hang up and get back on the phone, hang up and get back on the phone, hang up, get back on the phone. It's a, it's, it's a hundred people in this pod, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure y'all know you see the big line waiting behind the phone. Yeah. Can't keep doing that. Nobody's going to keep taking that. Yeah. Then you guys just started arguing and... Started arguing, you hit me. Yeah. I did what I did. Right. Got there, uh, the no, two inmates uh, were arguing and they started fighting. Right. Um, I came in a little bit after uh, Evans. Evans told him to stop okay. mm -hmm. and then uh, right. the inmate did not stop. And then uh, and after that, uh, the Evans tased the inmate. The right. inmate went down, the other inmate decided to go ahead and he didn't want to get tased, so he went ahead and went down to the ground as well. And uh, I handcuffed uh, the first inmate, the one that got tased, and uh, we took him to, to medical to get assessed. Okay, so they both complied without any more problems after that. They both complied without any problems. Great. Thank you. Hey, Anthony, I need you to tell me what happened yesterday. What started everything between the two of you? Phone. The phone? You guys got into a fight over the phone? Yes, you guys had any problems in the past? Yeah. No? Yeah. So who started it? He hit you in the back of the head. He hit you in the back of the head? What did he hit you with? His fist. His fist? All right. And that's all that happened? That's when he hit me in the back of the head with his fist. And I guess when I was turning around, he said I was trying to hit him, but I was really just grabbing at him, I guess. You were just grabbing at him? Well, when I walked in, it looked like you guys were really about to go at it. Yeah, he, he got hit. You know what I'm saying? Bam, bam. I guess when I turned, you know, I was doing like this, trying to grab at it. Uh-huh. I, I, I wasn't swinging. Nothing, nothing. You weren't swinging? Mm -hmm. You never swing? Mm -hmm. Are you I mean, sure? I, I, I don't know if I did or not. You know what I'm saying? When he hit me back in the head, I was doing like this, but I don't know if I was swinging or not. You know okay. What I'm I ain't gonna lie. Okay. All right, that's all I needed. Let's go. Come here. Hey, Joey, I need you to tell me what happened between the two of you. Uh -huh. He meant he just started getting mad because the line started getting longer and longer on the phone. Mm -hmm. I guess he wanted to jump the line and use the phone. 
Right. And, and what happened was that when I had got off the phone with Mama, he had jumped over the bars, came down and kind of forged me out of the way trying to get on the phone in front of everybody. Right. And that's how it started. It started from there. Okay. And he just started pushing me. He started telling me that lockdown. I'm like, no. Did you hit him first? Yeah, he hit me first on my left side. Yeah. Did you you never hit him with the phone in the back of the head or anything? I hit him after he hit me though. Right. I, I hit him after he hit me. Though. Well, when I walked in, it looked like you guys were really about to go at it. Was what I was seeing. See, what happened was he had, he was beating me up. Yeah. And then when that time that came in there, I had got a chance to get up off the ground and defend myself. Okay. And when I had got to defend myself, that's when I got electrocuted. You got tased. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you only got taste once though, right? Yeah, don't want to do that again, huh? <laughs> Not a good ride, huh? Uh, then I'm BOC, so I wasn't trying to get into no trouble. You're right. I've been trying to just do my time. And I don't know what he got going on. I wasn't irritating him. I wasn't there messing with him. I didn't even say nothing to him about the phone. Right. I just know he jumped over the thing and was sitting there. He actually jumped the whole line because there was four other people waiting to use the phone besides him. Uh huh. You do know the disciplinary hearing officer is going to come see you probably next week. She'll talk to you about this, and that's going to determine how long you're going to be in segregation. Okay, but we're looking at probably 30 days for fighting. 30 days. 30 days. All over a phone, man. Even if it's self-defense. Even if it's self-defense. Dude, you don't have to do that. You don't got to fight. Yeah. All right. All it was was a fight over the phone. What these guys don't realize is that every time that they get into a fight, it's always going to cost them 30 days in segregation because every action they have is always going to have a reaction. This is a central booking. Uh, we're in downtown Austin, Texas. 80 to 90 percent of the people that we get on a given night, you know, may be really upset that they got arrested, uh, not very understanding of, you know, why they're here. On this job, you have to put your thinking cap on because you never know what you're going to run into on a given night and how creative you're going to have to be. And sometimes you have to think of some good ones. I ain't done nothing wrong. Nothing. Okay, hey, you want to take that off? Yeah. Is that what you want to do? You yeah, sure? Take it you sure? Because mm -hmm. it ain't easy. I need to be in a mirror or give me a scissors. Because it's <laughs> hard, dude. I'm ripping it. You see that? Now, would you like to take it off? Would you like to take it off? Let me go to the back and take it off. Go ahead and take it off. Just take it off, that's all. I'm gonna put it in your property, you'll get it back. Don't step, don't step over here. Step back and take it off. Step, step back and take it off. Step back, to here. Is this where you'd like for me to take it off? It's all about safety. I know, but it's nothing way, personal. Y'all are confronted. Let me tell you something. Okay. Uh, okay. Go, while you're talking, you can go ahead and remove it. No, I'm, I'm gonna talk. No, not I'm, no. All right, then you do it. Go ahead and sit down. Sit down. Sit down, sir. Go ahead and You're gonna throw me down, or what the is gonna happen, dude? Go ahead and turn around. Turn Go ahead and turn around. Back. Watch your hand. Go ahead and turn around, sit down. Sit down. Yeah. I'll help you with this. It's, it's real easy to just comply. It's not. You know, I'm not going to hurt dude, you. Dude, it's so embarrassing, dude. I understand it's embarrassing, but it, it's, you know what? to your life, dude. Is your life that dull, dude? Is your life that bad, dude? Because I thought we were in Austin, Texas. I thought we were in Austin, Texas, dude. This is not Austin no more. Okay, I'm going to let you finish doing this, and you yes, can do sir. it at your own pace. Yes, sir. But you're going to stay in here to do it. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Are you okay? Yeah. There you go. I'm brain dead. I lost my brain out of my skull in three spots. If y'all are messing with me. But anyway. Go ahead and work on getting that out before the nurse gets here. Yes, and uh, if you're not done by the time the nurse gets here, I'll let you finish afterwards, uh, okay? I'm fine, done by the time the nurse gets here. Is the money, right is the money that was taken from you an intake? Uh, no, no, you keep that. No, no, that. no, no that's yours. You, you keep it on you. I'm going to keep it in my pocket. What about, what happened to my wallet, dude? Where's my social security card? Where's my driver's license? Where's my visa card? Where's the procedure is, 
Everyone that comes in gets to keep their money until we reach a certain point. You keep your money oh, on you. The goodness. rest of your Thank property you. is Thank placed you. in a vow pouch and, and sealed, okay? Thank you. All right. What happened with this guy, man? What happened to him? What happened? Uh, he was what inside him? a bar and paid his tab or signed at the top of the, the tab instead of the bottom where you're supposed to sign. Right. So when they approached him about it, he refused, tore it up, threw it in their face. And then uh, when one of the bouncers asked him about it, he basically tried to attach, attack a bouncer that was about 6'6". And uh, right about that time was when we were going by, they flag us down. So we peeled them off of them and took them into custody. What was that? He's not in his right mind. No. Attack a 6'6 six, six <laughs> nope. bouncer. Man. Probably, what'd you, what'd we, you charge him with? Uh, PI, theft of service, and uh, assault by contact on the bouncer. All right. So probably saved his life. Yeah, All right. All right, man. <laughs> Charles has come in. Uh, he was a little irate when he came in, uh, a little uncooperative. He has some... Uh, he has a pretty long beard, and he has rubber bands and things like that in it. And uh, our policy is that as we remove those things, because it's uh, been known that people hide contraband or other things in there, I've got him in that room so he can go ahead and take them out. If he's compliant, I'll go ahead and let him sit out there with everybody else. If not, he'll stay back there until he goes to court. Listen to me. You're here on a charge. You've got to answer to that charge. We can do nothing about that. Since I didn't bring you here, but I have to keep you here, right. how about we cooperate until you can answer to your charge? Sir, yes, sir, I was cooperating. Which means don't bang on the door because you're going to cause this guy to get upset with you. You're going to cause people out there to get upset. Right. And if you start banging hard enough, guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen? That's where we're going to go next. I don't want to put you in there. Last word, don't bang anymore. Yes, sir. Because we're going to go to the next level, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Go ahead and have a seat, man. Go ahead and have a seat. He's not getting it. He's going through peaks and valleys. You never know what you're going to get from him from one minute to the next. Until he gets out of here, that's probably what we're going to have, go, have to go through with him. fear and my concerns are safety amongst staff and, and inmates as well. Any given time, something can kick off in a facility. And that, as my job as a supervisor, I have to determine real quick, if we go to a day room, I got to be able to focus in the day room, see what's going on real quick, and deploy manpower. You always got to be up on awareness. Don't take things for granted. You never know what's going to go on. You never know what's going to happen in a correction facility. So Ten four. Oh, I just got called to report to the business center. I don't know the whole particulars yet, but once we get over there, we'll find out what's going on. Uh, what happened? 
Right now we have an individual that was uh, stabbed by, he's saying two females, about two blocks from the facility. He came shoveling into the facility and started yelling and he got stabbed. Good. Good. Go to charge, John. Jeans. He was with two girls. Yeah. So it was one guy with two girls. Yeah. 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 Well, you know the girl's name? Yeah. What's her name? Amanda. Amanda? Yeah. She's from Bootin. She's from Bootin? Yeah. What's yeah. she look like? She a Caucasian female. White girl? Yeah. How old? 18. Right now they're going to put oxygen on them. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Stay there for me. Now they're going to transport the individual to uh, St. Joe's emergency room, which is about a half a mile up the road. And our patrol division, Sergeant here is now, he's going to put some units in the area to see if they locate the uh, suspects that did the injuries. Just like this. Ready? Ready? This is the first time that I've seen that in 15 years that we had a civilian get stabbed and run into the facility like that. He had two stab wounds to his back around the lower area part of the lungs. Any stab wounds that involve the lungs can be potentially life-threatening. So is it a life-threatening injury? Yes, it is. So hopefully we just helped him live another couple days, another year, live out his life fully. So let's hope for the best. Hopefully uh, he makes it out tonight, make sure he's okay, and he's able to walk past us tomorrow and say thank you. All right, we're gonna go upstairs right now and uh, talk to the individual that was, uh, got stabbed on the outside of the facility, and we went out there to help him out. Turns out now he's in the jail. I'm gonna go see how he's doing and see what his charges are. He's in jail now. See what happened. We're gonna go on the third floor and uh, see the individual. See what happened to him, why he got uh, locked up. He went from a stabbing victim to an incarcerated, so we'll see what he did. Come here. So what happened? I like this? Yeah, let me see. You yeah, stabbed up? Yeah. We banned you up, we helped you out, we right. saved you, we saved you. You called me for that. And how'd you and you go back, how'd you get locked up? Some <laughs> man, they put me in, man. For what? What'd you charge? Um, first degree robbery and um second degree assault. Right. So you got stabbed on the outside, we banned right. you up, helped you up, now send you to the house. Now they're trying to say I stabbed somebody. Now you stabbed somebody. That's what they said. But you didn't stab nobody. Nah, I ain't even got no. What? what? <laughs> Did you retaliate against the guy that stabbed you? Nah, I don't see none of them. Okay, so you don't see them no more? Nah, because um, I got somebody investigating. All right, well, have uh, a seat. I'll uh, talk to you a little bit, right? All right, All right Ward. <laughs> he was stabbed, and now he's back in here supposedly getting charged with stabbing somebody else. I guess he's looking to draw, huh? It's a freaky thing. I got so we'll see what happens. 
and the doors open up and they leave me outside and they hand me my clothes and, and the key to my ride now the night hits my face and it brings me to life oh lord now i'm out that jail tonight another night in my street another night in my hair now i'm kicking and tripping without the cops on my chair now my hands on the wheel and my fingers grew tight i'm gonna go home to my family tonight i've been thinking about my own and the doors open up and they leave me outside I'm gonna go home to my family tonight I've been thinking about my home I've been thinking about my kids I don't wanna be alone I gotta get up out of this Just give me out Just give me out